Uh, hello and welcome. I'm your host and speaker, Eugene. Um, thank you for taking the time to join us today as we talk about the best communication of education tools. Uh, you'll leave with EdTech trends, best practice, demonstrations, and more. And to make sure we're helping you as best as we can on this webinar, we have a chat box to uh, source your questions. Uh, feel free to drop questions on the topics or share your struggles and experience. Anything that you have questions regarding education and metaverse, uh, will be free to answer all of your questions. Uh, so with further ado, let me introduce you to Nathan Bowman, head of partner of Gather, who will talk about metaverse and education. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for having me, Eugene. This is fantastic. I'm so excited to get to meet all these new people and talk. Yes, I'm super excited today, too. Uh, we are uh, live streaming in um, different um, time zones, KST, PST, and EST. I am so excited that we can talk to everyone uh, today with you and with Cluster. So um, I'm seeing people coming in on the webinar right now. So I think we will start with uh, my session to begin with. Uh, today, I'll talk about Classroom as an EdTech Cup. Um, hope you guys all enjoy. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Classroom's webinar, Gather with Classroom. My name is Eugene Choi. I am CEO and co-founder of interactive learning platform, Classroom. I am so happy to be able to host this webinar today. At today's webinar, I would like to talk about the importance of communication in education. In order to do this, why don't we actually travel back in time where we were actually doing face-to-face -face learning. So when we were actually learning inside an offline environment, when we were doing face-to-face -face learning, let's look at what happened after class. So after class, when classes are over and students would like to talk to the teachers or they will have a questions or they want to interact with other peers, what happens? Because students actually spend 100 hours as on average per week outside class. There are mainly three types of tools that a lot of the schools used in order to bring that communication. One was LMS learning management systems such as Canvas, Blackboard, Moodle based LMSs and so on. Um, they were made for management, so there weren't many interactions and the usabilities were very poor because they were in the early 2000 UI and UX. Um, the second only, uh, the most uh, widely used tool was email. Uh, students would email the professor, but as a freshman, they will have to Google search how to email the professors, format them out, and be able to send the right email they are going to ask. Um, and when they format them out, the questions might be really short, but the way they have to greet and say salute or very long and it had them really hard to actually format them out. Last but not least, uh, with the uh, growth of social media, um, the teachers would actually make a group chat room or make a Facebook group and then they will uh, invite students to come in and be able to interact with, with each other. But with social media, there were a lot of the security, security issue has been brought up by using social media. So what other tools were available and what happened after COVID? So with COVID, um, when schools were um, going all remote, there were lockdowns, they had to turn to the tools that they were already using mostly, like the three tools that I have introduced before, mostly learning management systems and emails, and they would add on um, video conferencing tools such as Zoom or Google Hangout and so on. So basically a lot of the tools that schools were actually using prior to COVID, they thought it was very much enough to do online communication and students and teachers and um, students to students that were having, you know, no issues in communicating with each other. But when COVID-19 hit, basically this was what students were actually, you know, this is what they actually looked like when they were listening to classes or when they had a hard time following up with classes. There weren't that much that they can do. 77% um, of the students actually said that lack of engagement in class experience was the biggest obstacle for them in adjusting to online learning. So there were way more than learning than just Zoom and learning management system and so on. So what we saw that was that the tools that were provided to do an online communication, regardless of an offline situation or online situation, was not really working. So a lot of the times teachers would ask, why are they so silent? Why are they not asking questions? Um, making questions and formulating them is a really important part of learning, but why are they not doing that? 
um, especially with having on remote um, class settings. This was a really critical issue for teachers because they didn't really know if the students were actually understanding the class. And for the students as well, they had really hard time actually keeping up with the classes as well. Um, so we actually thought about this question way back in 2017 when we were actually using a learning management system and sending emails to our teachers and realizing that there were actually an issue with the communication because communication do happen inside classes but many of the times it happens outside the class setting so isn't there a way a easier way to communicate with each other so it was a very simple question that we came up with and wanted to create a platform where that was possible so the word classroom is a combination of two words where we put class and forum together and we wanted to bring a vibrant environment inside class where students, teachers, students, teachers, students were able to have um, a free conversation and do discussions and so on. So what we saw was that the education was actually stuck in the past. So as you can see from the learning pyramid, an um, average retention rate after 24 hours of students learning, uh, for them to reach the 100 um, retention rate of learning, they actually have to do discussion, practice doing, and teaching others. But in the traditional part of um, learning, um, they were listening to lectures, they were reading their textbook, they would actually often listen or um, see audio and visual content and look at demonstrations from their school teachers. So where we looked at was the, the really important part of the pyramid, the discussion, practice doing, and also the teach uh, to teach others. So we focus on this three aspect um, to change the way that we learn and we communicate. And just by doing that, 94% of the students said it improved their learning just by using Klassen. Isn't that incredible? We changed just one aspect. We just changed that interaction is the key to learning. And you will be very curious on how we did this, right? So let me show you what Klassen is. So we focus on the learners, the Gen Zs and millennials, how they communicate and their expectation and learning experiences. So we changed the UI and UX into a very um, everyday used um, mobile app or web-based services. Instead of writing a board system or an email communication, we changed it into a chatting-based communication where they can easily ask questions and answer and communicate with each other. So it kind of brought up that um, a gap between um, online and in-person classrooms together, or even inside the online-only classes, it bridged the gap between um, the human touch that they were actually lacking. And also with the data that is collected behind Classroom, we were able to give them a data-driven insight, and also with our AITA thought, it will be able to help educators to reduce their time. When we first introduced Classroom to teachers or admins in school, they are very skeptical. Um, they really question us on asking how can a tool um, like Classroom can change the way that students communicate or change the class and way where students would freely ask questions and bring that vibrant environment that they have been dreaming for a long time. Um, and I bet there are some people in this webinar that thinks the same. Uh, let me tell you a story. A couple of months ago, we had a professor from Seoul National University, and we told him that why don't you use Classroom to um, open it up as a Q&A board uh, where students can ask questions and so on. And his response was that our LMS system, ETL, already has a Q&A board. I already gave students an outlet to ask questions, and they're free to do so. I feel like there's no problem. Why should I use Classroom? This is normally how professors or teachers would react when we ask them if they would like to use Classroom. Um, but we pushed him and told him that, why don't you give it a try a little bit and tell us how it works for you? Uh, we weren't really sure if he would actually adopt it in his class, but a couple of months later, um, we actually received a text. Um, he was actually really wowed on the fact that just adopting Classroom how much a change for the class and for their students. He told us that he thought that the Q&A board was exactly the same as Classroom. It's just an outlet for students to ask questions. Having a board system and chatting base, there's no difference. But it did. 
um, over the course of the time in his, the semester, over 300 questions were asked, and he has never received this much questions from students. He was wow that students had a question, they could art articulate the questions, and they were really interested in what they were learning. So how Slack replaced email and social media for teen communication inside corporates and enterprises, they changed the workplace environment. Just like that, we feel like revolutionizing learning begins with optimized communication. That's why we believe that replacing emails and social media for class communication, we are changing the education environment as a whole. And we just don't end there. In 2017, we started as a Q&A tool. Um, we wanted to bring that communication inside class where students felt comfortable uh, to ask questions. But as Classroom has developed, we became an educational hub. So with Classroom, you can ask questions, answer them, unload homework, um, have an AITA bot to be able to answer the questions, have a statistic of individual students' progress or the class progress, but more, you can add the, your favorite tools to teach. So you can actually add Zoom on Classroom to teach your online classes, put Gather to create a Metaverse Classroom, have Padlet on to be able to organize a task or upload homeworks as you like. So with Classroom, you can add any tool that you would like and create your own class. A demo on how Classroom can be used as an educational hub, which means you can still use your favorite learning or teaching tools, but also use Classroom to increase engagement. So I'm going to pinpoint out um, some of the main features that students and teachers love to use. Community, where communication happens. So this is a place where students would ask questions, um, communicate with each other, read notice, unload homework, and so on. So when they have a question, they will go up here, write a question, and then they can ask in code block or in a late tech form or by text or by uploading photos and so on. So there's no limitation in asking questions on Classroom. So once the question is unloaded, students can read the questions on the left side and answer on the right side through a chatting based format. So as I have explained before, we incorporated a lot of day to day um, communication apps or web based services that we use so students can feel free to communicate with each other. So you can click like on the comments. You can also say you're curious or clap for each other and so on. They can also ask questions or answer them anonymously, but when teachers click on the profile, they can see the real name. Let's look at notice. So notice is a little bit uh, different than question. So for teachers, we provide um, the reading rate of how many students have read the notice um, who did not. So if there are students who did not read the notice, you can re-notify them so everyone in your class have received the notice. Also, if they have a question or comment about the notice, they can ask here uh, with a chatting base as well. Um, and you can answer them uh, without having to send them email or upload it on a, on a post on your LMS or anything like that. When one student has a question, it's most likely that everyone inside the class is curious about the same thing. So instead of having to reply, uh, redundant duplicate emails for every single student, once you have answered the question, it will be shared by the whole class. So no more answering to redundant. Feedback is a unique feature on Classroom that allows um, honest communication between students and teachers. So instead of having to wait for midterm or end of the season, uh, end of the class um, to receive feedback from students through class assessment, you can actually receive feedback from students anytime you want. So you can actually receive it in two different ways. So right now, the one that I'm showing is anonymous feedback. So there will be um, a chatting uh, bubble that will be open for individual students. So as a teacher, I can actually see the all see all the responses. But as a student, I will only see one chat from me and my teacher. So once I go in here and a student has um, an answer, I can come go here and then answer them and have a one on one private chat with the students. If you want to do an uh, individual response through the real name, you can go here and get a real name feedback. A lot of the teachers use real name feedback when they actually want to students to submit homework through Classroom because in that way, they can actually give feedbacks to students 
about the homework um, through chatting base. So students can actually ask questions about the homework and also uh, teachers can give them feedback and be able to know in depth on how they have uh, done the homework. So moving on to coursework. So this is a place where you can actually make your own course. So if you want to do a live class, you can actually use Zoom. So you can um, set all the settings that you have done on Zoom before and you can do it on Classroom. You can also schedule the session on here so you don't have to make your Zoom class every single time there is a class, no need to send any more invitations, link or code, um, none of that. So you can actually set your course, uh, Zoom course here and students can go on to your class through Classroom. Also, that you can upload your VODs or upload any content that you want to show your students through YouTube link and so on. So once a, um, a video file is unloaded, instead of students individually watching the video, we have a chat here as well. So the students can actually chat with each other while watching the video. So especially for teachers who are doing blended learning and they want students to watch the video before the class begins, it's really um, helpful for students to watch the video and interact with each other, ask questions on here before class. You can go to the analytics page and be able to gain insight on the overall class also, you can go to member progress and be able to see individual students' data and also be able to see the individual data on how well they have done on their coursework. Um, along with all the features that we provide, you can also add your favorite learning teaching tools here. Um, as you can see, I have added Gather, my favorite metaverse tool. So if I click over here, I will be sent to my Gather classroom. So once I have gone into my gather class um, I can actually go here and listen to the teacher's lecture or be able to break into uh, a group room and then be able to talk to the group and do group activities or I can go up on the podium and be able to uh, do presentation and so on so all the live interaction will be done on on gather and all the um, text space or all the communication that you need to do after class will be um, done on Classroom. We have over 5,000 schools, corporates, and organizations around the world that are using Classroom. Whether you're teaching K-12 schools to higher ed, or doing onboarding training through corporates, or having a webinar like in your organizations, you can do so much more with Classroom. Any space that you are there is learning, Classroom can work. You can teach a student a lesson for a day, but if you can teach him to learn by creating curiosity, he will continue the learning process as long as he lives. This was a really important quote for me uh, when I was actually building Classroom because students can gain knowledge through teachers, but also through internet search. They can actually search keyword, watch YouTube, and so on. But something that a teacher can do is actually give them curiosity in learning of wanting to ask questions or to interact with each other. And this would actually give them an opportunity to like to learn and be able to continue that learning process in their life as well. Thank you for listening to the webinar today. I am so happy that you were able to join us. If you have any questions, please let us know. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nathan and I handle partnerships at Gather and I'm so happy to be here today. Thank you so much for the opportunity to come and, and talk. Um, I love talking. But I also love sharing the story of Gather and some of the amazing use cases we've seen, especially looking at education, because it's such a great opportunity. So what I'd like to do today in just a little bit under 15 minutes is I'd like to talk a little bit about the story of Gather, where we come from, where our mission is, and then talk about some of the amazing things that we've seen in education, some of the ideas that we've had and that other people have brought to us. And then we'll talk a little bit about what the future brings. Um, and there'll be plenty of time for questions too. Um, to give you some context, I'm not an engineer. I know just enough to be dangerous. But what I do know is the mission of Gather. And we wanna create opportunity and connection for everyone, no matter where you are. Um, and that actually works really well right now because I'm saying hello to you from Montreal in Canada right now. That's why it's so dark outside. So, but let's talk about what opportunity and connection mean. For folks. It's the idea that no matter where you are, you have the ability to have real authentic interactions. You can have relationships, you can work a job, you can 
do the things that up until now had really required geographic connection. And that's what we talk about when we talk about building the metaverse. And I know that's trendy right now. And I know that's the thing that everyone is talking about, but we believe in that. And we started this with the intention of building the metaverse. And so we don't think that it ought to matter where you live as to what you can do. So when we talk about what is Gabby, what it means is it's proximity-based, self-directed video chat in a world that's made by you full of creative elements and interactive experiences. So this is a little bit hard to talk about here in a presentation format, but I would invite all of you to go to gather.town slash app and see it for yourself. You can explore whole worlds. You can interact with people anywhere. <laughs> Uh, and you can build your own worlds too. And that's what that really means. But it's also simple. It's easy to use. We're browser-based. We don't require VR goggles. We don't require an app, a download, a registration, a sign up. You just click the link and you're in. And you can walk up to someone and you talk to them and it feels normal. It feels authentic and natural and right. So when we talk about that feeling human, that's what we really mean. We mean that social cues apply. <laughs> if you walk into a conversation that you weren't supposed to be hearing, you feel embarrassed and you walk away. If you walk up to a friend that you haven't seen in forever, you feel happy because you're standing next to that friend. And so the intent and the purpose of the gather and of the metaverse is to give that sense of presence, that sense of connection, that sense of I'm right next to this person, even if I'm in Canada and you're not. But let's talk about education a little bit. Let's talk about what's possible in education. And so first, before we talk about all the things that you can do, let's talk about the things that are easy to do. So with Gather, you're walking around on top of a JPEG. It can look like anything. It can be styled like anything. But a lot of folks start with our templates. And so here's one of them. You're able to walk up and talk to people. You're able to interact with people how you want to, how you feel like you should. Um, if you think that this conversation is boring, we'll go find a different one. Or if you want to go check in on this table and see, absolutely. So I'd like to share with you a story from an early adopter of Gather, someone who has been teaching university level courses on Gather for, I guess, a year now. Um, her name is Dr. Celine Latulpe. She's from the University of Manitoba. And she had this to say about Gather. She wrote a fantastic article about it. Um, happy to share that link if anyone is interested. But she built and taught an entire class in Gather about computer science. And this wasn't because it was on computer science and she wanted to teach about Gather. It was because of the pandemic, because of COVID. And, and she had to find something. And I'm sure everyone's familiar with that. We've all had that experience where we had to find something. And a lot of us went to Zoom. And I don't want to throw Zoom under the bus. I don't, Zoom does a fantastic job. So does Teams, so does Skype, so does WebEx, so does Big Blue Button. They're all great, but they all miss that interaction, that buzz, that connection. They all are a passive experience. And Gather is active. Gather is the ability to Choose who you want to talk to, how, when, and why. But Gather is not just about that communication. We can start there, though, with group conversations. In the image here, um, I, 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 I hopped into one of our template spaces to take this picture this morning. Um, you're able to see you can have groups of students around a whiteboard. They're able to share that whiteboard and chat. And then the teacher can come by and chat and can come by and interact and say, hey, 
How's it going over here, table five? Oh, looks like somebody at table six has raised their hand. I need to go check on them. All of that is possible, not just possible, all of that is easy. All of that takes less than 30 seconds to build and set up. Um, and we think that's important. We think that no code, easy to use options matter, especially for education. And I can share with you as well, I have a very personal connection to this. Um, my wife is currently getting a PhD in education. She's been a teacher for years. I was the teacher early in my career. I know what it's like. You don't have time. You don't have the ability to do a lot of things, especially when you're trying out something new. When you're trying out something that, will it work? I don't know how to do it. So all of the things in Gather that we're looking at here are no code. They're easy to do, easy to work with. And we think that's important, not just for education. Um, we think that's important for, for everyone. So all of the other things that I'm about to show you too are also no code, easy to do. So you can have collaborative documents where everyone's working on the same document and that's on table five. And I walk over to table five and look at what they're working on. I walk over to table six and they're watching a video. All of this happens natively in Gather. What else? We've had graduation ceremonies and parties, academic poster sessions, giant symposia, but let's talk about the fun stuff. Cause I think this is only starting to scratch the surface of what digital education really offers. And, and the really interesting and, and the special combination of digital education and, and the metaverse and, and, a, and a way to have a sense of place and identify with, with where you are in a way that you never could, you could never be there physically. So for example, we can take a field trip in history and walk the streets together of Colonial Williamsburg. But also, where do we think we are here? I'll give you a second to guess. Look at the detail. Look at those cracks. Look at the scale. Look at how small my avatar is in comparison to the rest of the terrain, to the landscape. Do you think you know? Was I right? Were you? This is an inspiration from a man named Terrence Finnegan who created this concept and I love it. And we're, we work with him great. He's, he's, a, he's a great friend of the platform. He realized that as a teacher, your world is not limited to only the things that you could normally see and interact with. So you're able to take a field trip to a painting, not just to an art museum. And he'll have his class walk around and find their favorite brush stroke. Talk to me about their favorite use of color. Find the perfect pixel. You could never do that in an art museum, but you can in the metaverse and you can on Gather. Or when your class is in a conversation, they can have the thinking cloud or they can walk over to where the question is. They can describe how they're feeling, even if they can't use words. They can interact and they can choose how to interact again and have that sense of place without requiring any other, anything else. And we think that's really, really important. And I think the most important thing about this too is that again, I wanna stress, this is no code. This is not hard to build. This is not hard to develop. This is not anything except what you have already, especially to start. So instead of going through a lesson on your pre-existing materials, talking about screen share, let's walk over and everybody vote. Where do we think the cat is? Let's decide, do we think this math question, do we think the answer is right or not? We can use pre-existing materials, and this is just scratching the surface. We're so excited about the idea that educators and creators around the world are able to build and operate their own worlds <laughs> inside of the metaverse and inside of Gather. And that's where we think that we're going. That's the plan. 
is we want to build the metaverse to connect communities. We want the, we want there to be no boundaries between you and the conference that you need to go to, that you'd like to present at, but you have childcare issues, mobility issues, visa restrictions, budget issues, climate change, and you don't want to buy a plane ticket to put carbon in the air. Whatever the, thing, the reasons are, if we can find an alternative that allows you to have that same amazing experience or a comparable one, that's what we're trying to do. So how are we getting there? And this is a very broad sense, but this is also something that we'd like to talk about with education in mind. Um, we have a robust API. You're able to write your own code. All of the examples we've seen so far have been no code, but you are able to interact programmatically and build your own custom code on top of Gather. We also have a creator ecosystem. You're not limited to your map. You can share that. It's just a URL. And so if a friend has built an amazing lesson, share it, great, or, or, or put it up on the forums, share it with the world. We also know that community is important in education. The idea that you can walk, sometimes you need someone to study with, sometimes you need someone to practice a language with, sometimes you need a tutor, sometimes you need office hours. The idea that you can have a persistent permanent space that you're able to visit and interact with and chat and, and just hang out and spend time with, that's also going to be very important as we move into that vision of the metaverse. And then finally, we think that it's important that it's low friction. And low friction doesn't mean uh, easy to use, although it helps. Low friction also means cheap. Low friction means that it doesn't require uh, a virtual reality headset or a high-end computer, or an amazing internet connection, or a lot of technical experience. Low friction means click the link and you're in. So let me end with a story. And this is the story of how I fell in love with Gather, how I fell in love with the metaverse, and how my 88-year-old grandfather celebrated his birthday on Gather. So I come from a small town in Kentucky. Um, this was during COVID. I have a little brother. He's 15 years old, which in Kentucky means that he's not allowed to drive a car yet. And so my mother planned a birthday party for my grandfather. It was on Gather. It was the first party we'd ever done on Gather. And it was before I even worked for Gather. But we thought this will be fun. We'll try it and we'll see how it works. And so I built a copy of that farm that I grew up on. And we sent the link to all of our family and my 88 year old grandfather. Well, he used a laptop that my little brother took over to his house. My mom drove him to his house, took the laptop, handed the laptop in through the window. And my little brother sat on the porch in front with his laptop and grandfather had his laptop in the house. And mom went home to her computer. But we all got together on gather on the copy of the farm that I grew up on. And it felt right. My mom and her sisters, so my aunts, sat at the kitchen table and chatted and played games. My uncles stood in the, in the hallway and talked about politics until they got too loud and my mother kicked them out onto the back porch where they always go. My grandfather ran around playing with the cousins. It felt the same as always. And then at the end of the night, my mother closes her machine down says goodnight to my little brother and goes to bed. She forgot he was still on the, on the porch at my grandfather's house the next town over because it felt normal. It felt like he'd been in the house because he had been in the house on gather. He ended up staying the night at my grandfather's house in the garage. Um, and I learned that a virtual interaction can have real world meaning. So I hope that this has been, I know this has been fast. <laughs> I hope this has been helpful for you to understand a little bit about our vision for Gather, some of just, just a few of the ideas of uh, what might be possible. I'd love to talk to any and all of you. Um, I hope you'll stick around and ask some amazing questions. We're excited about that. Um, and I wanna share just two last things. Uh, number one, these are kind of exciting for us. Um, number one, we recently closed our Series B. 
Um, and that's not about the money. That's not about the credibility. That's about the vision of the world. And the entire world sees that the metaverse is important. So we're excited about moving into the future with the world, although we're a little bit ahead of everybody else, we think. And number two, I'll just tease this. Um, we're very excited about some of the other opportunities and possibilities that are coming to the metaverse and coming together beyond the stuff that you might think is maybe a little bit normal. So with that, again, thank you so much for giving me the chance to come talk to you today. I'd love to answer some questions. I'd love to have a conversation. Let's get started. Thank you so much, Nathan, for the presentation, explanation about Gather, the Metaverse, and education. Especially, I think it was really interesting to um, learn more about how Gather could actually be implemented and used and executed inside the education. Um, also, hey, uh, hello, uh, happy late 80th birthday for your grandfather. I think that was amazing how you guys threw the laptop through the window. Uh, that was really fun. Um, there are a lot of questions that we actually have received um, before the the webinar has begun. Um, there are a lot of questions that are coming in while we are doing the session. So why don't we just go ahead and you know get into this uh, the yeah. questions, talk about it, and let's just answer some of the things people are like really curious about. So um, why don't we begin with the first question? Uh, the first question is: Is real time communication? Um, I I think this is a question for me, but um, you can like obviously go ahead and like join me. Uh, the first question that I received while doing was that is real time communication an important part of Clossum? I'm curious what you think is the biggest advantage of using Metaverse and Clossum together? Ooh, that's like a really good question. Um, I think as I have um, explained in my, um, has talked about in my um, session, uh, our Clossum and my personal favorite Metaverse is using Gather inside Clossum. I think, um, um, Nathan will actually like talk about the really importance about it. It's that like there's no need of coding, no code, also no VR headsets or AR uh, headsets or anything like that is needed. And I think while um, COVID has kind of um, started, people kind of like started to realize that um, having that kind of um, uh, devices and internet and computer is kind of impossible for students to actually achieve um, um, for a, quite a long time, I think. And especially having a background in metaverse and uh, especially I have majored in telepresence in my master's degree, I know how much um, devices that people actually need to achieve that. So I think using gather was a great way to achieve that um, realness inside education. Um, so going back to the question, real-time communication is really important for Clawson because that's how we actually started. Um, I mean, like, if you look at how we live nowadays, we communicate through iMessages or Facebook Messenger, and we just, like, talk constantly. And uh, it's it's exactly the same as how we would like ring someone and call them. And I kind of wanted to bring that environment with inside education. Why not? Because we have actually have done this for, um, I mean, we do live questions inside class. Why don't we bring that outside class and on into the online environment where we already have all the systems that we need. We have a phone, we can go onto our laptops, we can talk, we can do all that. But why are we still emailing and like doing questions on the q and a board and having to wait constantly. So I thought bringing that like real time communication, that feeling of being interactive brings that energy level up inside the class environment where people can actually, um, you know, discuss and have Q and A and all those that will bring more curiosity into the class. So we thought that real time communication was really important. And we are very much of a text or video or uh, video based um, um, tool where we have integrated Zoom as well, but it's very much a text or video based conversation and bringing um, gather inside classroom, it brought that live interaction where Nathan has already explained people will be in a space together. It's a spatial audio um, system has came in. So people would be able to hear someone when they're near and then when they are far away, they can't or they can do um, stand on the podium and talk. So it gives that liveness into that real time communication. So what we have um, 
um, consulted teachers and education education institutions to do is use Classroom as a text-based or audio-based or uh, video conferencing-based communication tool and bringing gathered together to actually teach classes into a real time where they need more interaction in group sessions and, and so on. So bringing all that spectrum together, it brings that fullness in education. It brings that um, blended learning aspect into it. it, brings actually the real time into it and um, online learning and everything can actually just work in one platform. And I think that's what's so amazing that people can all do that just through their phone or just through their laptop. So yeah, yeah real-time communication is important and Gather is amazing. So I think it's really great when we work together. Nathan, do you have anything that you want to kind of join and talk about? Oh God, I couldn't couldn't say it any better. Oh, um, <laughs> got it. Oh yeah. Then um, I think if you if anyone has a follow up question on the answers, feel free to put it on the Q and A board. I think there are so many questions that are coming up right now. But um, let me go on and um, pop up with a second question. Uh, the second question that we have received during the Q and A uh, during our session is that how did you measure the learning outcome? So this was a question that we have uh, received from J.K. J. Kang. Um, how did you measure the learning outcomes? I think it works both way for us and also gather. Um, Nathan, do you want to kind of like answer that question as well? In in terms of how to measure. Um, yeah, like how do you think people can use Gather to measure the learning outcomes? The things that we've learned is that the methodology that you use in real life, um, the, the lessons that you've learned in real life translate very, very well into Gather. Mm -hmm. And so whatever you're using now, whatever you've found, you're all professionals, you're all experts, you've done this before, mm -hmm. you know how to teach you know how to assess a student, you know how to understand huh. what they're doing. The things that you've done before are the things that work very, very well in data mm -hmm. and don't require extra technology in the middle of it. But if you want that data, if you want those metrics, the things that you use are able to be brought into gather very mm -hmm. easily. And so I, I, I would say that that gather doesn't really need to have those those assessments brought in mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um you're able to use whatever you're most comfortable with and whatever you've decided works best for your mm -hmm, students mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think when we have actually um, embedded Gather into Classroom, um, there were a lot of um, questions that pop up on how can we actually measure that behavior data and text-based data together to measure them. And that was like a very interesting um, part um, things to do for us because uh, when we actually started back in 2017 and up to 2018, yeah, we wanted to give um, teachers a way to understand the students and understand yeah. the classes overall. So um, we have, starting from 2018, we actually have uh, started to develop our AITA and its name is DOT. Um, and our DOT would learn um, the data behind That's it and be so able to, cool. yeah, it was super cool because like first time we presented was uh, back in 2018 um, at Imagine Cup from Microsoft. And when we did that, um, people were really asking us, is this possible? Is, are you sure you guys can do this? You, I mean, we were like, yeah, but at, like inside we were like, how oh, can we do this? Um, but we actually did. And we just launched DOT um, this year. And wow. what it does is that it actually learns the data that students leave as a Q&A. And then it will be able to first uh, reduce the redundant questions that teachers don't have to answer answer them anymore, but yeah. also get all the data and be able to tell students, maybe this is the thing that you're curious about. Why don't you talk to this person or get the data from the previous classes and they'll be able to learn from the previous students that they have never met before. So we wanted to break that boundary, like how Gather does of breaking the boundaries from um, you know different places. Yeah. With Classroom, we wanted to break that time gap between the classes now and that before and bring all that data together. So I think that was really fun way to do. And with having um, different data in Classroom, not only with the Q&A, but data such as like people interacting with each other, we can bring that data in and tell them, um, draw the network between students and so on. So having Gather and the data behind that, I'm actually really curious what we can do, um, what institutions can do, what teachers can do, what Gather 
other can do, what we can do. So I think I'm like super excited on like how we can actually stretch that uh, further on. Absolutely. Well, and, and so Gather has a fully featured API. We can, you know, I mean, well, you know this, um, but I'll say this to everyone else. It's 2021. We know data is king. We yeah. Know that it matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but at the same time, anytime we're in an educational context, we want to be sensitive to privacy concerns mm-hmm. and sensitive sure, sure. to, and, and so it's always an interesting conversation to try to understand. Mm-hmm. We're, mm-hmm. we're trying to help folks. We're trying to do the best we can. And mm-hmm. at the same time, we want to make sure that we're protecting folks. Uh, yeah, true. I think that kind of leads us to some of the questions that we're here of asking, like the age um, regulation for Gather. Uh, yeah. Do you kind of want to, uh, you know, touch upon that a little bit? Oh, yeah, we can, we can talk about that uh, briefly. Um, Gather is, our terms of service require that you be 18 to use Gather. So mm-hmm. for right now, uh, Gather is most appropriate for university or, or professional development courses. Mm-hmm. Um, we are working desperately to find a way to make sure that we can keep children safe mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. also allow them access to Gather. Mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. difficulties are, are numerous. Uh, we're working as hard as we can, but we're a young company. Uh, when I joined, yeah. there were there were there were maybe a dozen of us, and now we're almost to a hundred, which is crazy to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's been over the past 18 months. Yeah. So, so we're, we're absolutely working on it. Um, and we're very excited because we know that, that that's going to open up a huge amount of, of mm-hmm. really wonderful things, uh, but mm-hmm. we're not quite there yet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think um, what you have mentioned is really important, um, p- being able to uh, protect people who are using your platform and uh, actually gather really focusing on that and actually like, you know, telling people that this is really important and shows what kind of company gather is. And I really respect that. So I think it was really um, interesting to see, um, you know, uh, muses and what you guys uh, have posted and stuff. So I think, um, you know, it kind of shows like that we are a startup same uh we are yeah, growing yeah. and we kind of uh want to ask people to understand us as well because we are evolving every single day um but at the same time i think that other is doing great on you know um telling people the importance of privacy and protection and you know so on well and, and Eugen, one of the best parts about being a startup is we're able to move quickly and what that yeah. means then is that we're able to respond and so when mm-hmm. people and, and I'm sure this is the same for y'all when when users need something want something you're asking for something that's the thing that we're able to work on mm-hmm. we don't have the the institutional mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> inertia yeah. that a lot of larger firms might have mm-hmm. and we're, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're we're getting we're getting there but yeah what's we're, we're, we're interested in protecting folks, but we're also interested in, in learning from them and helping yes. them have what they're looking for. Yeah. yeah, that is like such a great um, way to learn about our users, learn about the market, learn exactly. just, you know, basically everything that we can actually get. So um, everyone who's joining, if you guys want to give feedback on Gather, please go ahead. If you have any questions about Cluster and want to give us some feedback, we are always, our ears are always open to you guys. So just feel free to talk to us. Yes. Um, let me move on to the second question. So the second question that was that came in was, I wonder if, um, oh, sorry. Okay. Number two question is, is there, is there ways to, uh, ways for corporates? Oh, I think that was, oh, let me just redo it. I, uh, they wanted to ask, I wonder if active education methods such as organizational development are possible. I'm curious how the design proceeds effectively um, and what to consider in order to do this. Yes, uh, do you kind of want to, uh, I think this is a question for Gather, most likely, do you want to answer this? It can be, sure. Um... I'll be honest, I don't necessarily know. <laughs> I, I, I should not pretend to know yeah. the best design processes to, uh, to, to build for education. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and if I sound like a broken, if, if I sound like I'm repeating myself, um, it's, it's because I, uh, how do I say this? Uh, I'm not the expert in education. You are, and not, not, not just you, Jin, uh, but, but you <laughs> and people that are watching this, yeah. You're the ones that know best. And so that's why uh, from, from our perspective, we're interested in building the easiest, best tools that you can then take for your exact needs. And so, mm-hmm. 
But there are some design processes in general that we found that are very, very helpful when setting up a gather space. And I'm happy to hit just one or two of those very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, but the biggest one is that gather, like reality, should be literal. Mm -hmm. Now, what do I mean by literal? That's kind of an odd word to use. But what I mean is that the things that you see in the metaverse should be reflective of the things that you see in reality, mm -hmm. unless you break the rules. And we'll save that for later. So before we break the rules, uh, a door, for example, we know what a door means. If you walk through a door, you go somewhere else. And so when you're building a space in the metaverse, when you're building a space on Gather, you shouldn't use all, you should use doors to indicate that there's more to explore and more mm -hmm. to see. Mm -hmm. Now, remember when I said about breaking the rules? A normal door, if I walk in through one direction, I'm going to exit the other direction, mm -hmm. right? I'm going to walk in from the left and come out from the right. That's how it goes. But if you break the rules and tell people you're breaking the rules, then you're able to do all of those other things that I was talking about in that <laughs> presentation. Um, so for example, if I say, oh, it's not a door, it's a magic door, <laughs> it's a teleporter, or it's a magic school, but whatever it is, yeah. um, as long as we tell users, hey, this doesn't, this is not a normal door, um, you're able to then have it teleport you or take you through the magic door onto the face of a painting or mm -hmm. to the worksheet or whatever. It's all about trying to help people understand what they're seeing and what's expected. Mm -hmm. And then when they go have that experience, they're a little bit prepared. Mm -hmm. So I think in general, that's the best, that's the best sort of design tip that I can offer. Mm -hmm. Um, so for custom, we have done um, HRD, um, HR, um, so like uh, for corporate learning, active learning uh, for quite a time. Um, and what we learned was that people are changing, um, the generations that people that are newly employed are changing. Um, so we are seeing more millennials and Gen Zs coming into the corporate. And then the way that they have taught um, their employee has to change as well, like what we are experiencing inside university up to K-12. And they are expecting to learn about A um, in Z way, but they're learning in a different way that they're not really used to, or they see it as outdated. Um, so Gather was actually really uh, fun for us to tell corporates to use, because as you said, they can teleport into different worlds. So when they go to a certain door, they expect something to come out, but it's something else. Um, like for example, in our, um, for Clausen's uh, Gather office, we have a, a Grand Prix go-kart place as well, which is really fun to uh, put in. So we um, wanted to have this race for people from different teams to come, and then they'll be able to do that. And then that brings up that exercise of teamwork together. Um, and that was really fun to do because we are all working remotely. Uh, we can't really go to go-karts anymore uh, for now. So why don't we just bring them into the metaverse world? So we did that. So I guess um, in, some times, uh, in some ways, people want to teach them how to do like leadership training. They want to do sales training. And, you know, tech team training and all those kind of thing. But at the same time, bringing people to do something like, um, you know, teamwork to grow teamwork, be able to do communication and all those other things are really important too. So putting that into gather was really fun. So we wanted people to do lectures, online learning through Classroom. They can do Q&A um, with the peers, but at the same time during like training uh, team, but also with other coworkers, teamwork training and stuff, they will go on to gather and do all those little activities. Um, we did uh, like uh, XO quizzes. That was really fun. You could do Tetris. You can level them up. You can do go-karts. And that was really fun too. So being able to balance that little bit out from learning, but also do activities that can bring people together was really important. And I think that was a bit lacking inside online um, HR uh, programs before. So it was really fun. Glad to hear it. Yeah, no, it's anytime you can bring fun things in, anytime, to, anytime you can have people really enjoying each other's company and, mm -hmm. and getting to know each other and working together, that's mm -hmm. that's a good result. Yeah, it is. So if anyone is, um, you know, wondering how that Grand Prix uh, uh, goat cart looks like, uh, feel free to hit us up. We'll be able to show you Clausen's um, office as well. We'll be able to help you guys how we run HR programs. So yeah, 
great. Oh yeah. 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 No, no. Y'all do a fantastic job. I, I love your office. <laughs> it was really fun. Uh, let's go to question number three. Okay. So let's look at question number three. Is there a fundamental difference between Zoom and Gather? How can behavior design be effective for education when using Gather? All right. Well, this one's, this one's all me, I'm sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't want to I should start my answer by saying Zoom is fantastic, right? Mm -hmm. Clearly, that's where we are. we're yeah. hosting this right now through that. Yeah. We have a great product and a great mm -hmm. service. But you're absolutely right. Whoever wrote this question, and there is a fundamental difference. Mm -hmm. um, and that difference is, I think of it, is, a, is two parts. Number one is autonomy. And second is mm -hmm. a sense of place. And so mm -hmm. autonomy matters because autonomy means you're active. Right. I, if I'm in a conversation and gather, I could walk away in the same way that I could walk away in real life. And the reason mm -hmm. I don't is because I'm engaged. I want to be here. I want to know what's happening. And, and I'm, I'm part of this and it's scratching that same social itch mm -hmm. that a real world conversation would have. And then at the same time, um, you talk about the sense of place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, how do I say this nicely? If I watch a television show, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, I, maybe something happens there, maybe it doesn't. But if all it is is text on a screen, I'm not going to remember that. Or if all mm -hmm. it is is, is really, I, I have to have context. I have to remember, oh, I learned about this thing while I was at this particular place doing this thing. It's all of those things around it. And so what Gather brings is that sense of place is also that sense of context. If you're remembering that I learned this about, about that painting because I was standing on top of that painting or I learned this uh, in this conversation that I was having with these four people and then I walked over to my friend and had the different conversation, that context and that experience really matters. And so when you're thinking about using Gather for education, if, if all you need to do, and <laughs> if all you need to do is deliver information, you should probably use Zoom. Yeah. I, I, I'll be honest. It's if all you want to do is stand and read mm -hmm. and, and, and pr make a presentation, I'm going to deliver this information, exactly what we're doing here. Then, then maybe Gather isn't the right fit for your tool. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. Zoom is fantastic. And so is Skype and Teams and WebEx mm -hmm. and all the others. But if you're looking for something that better reflects reality, that allows you to engage and that allows your students to really participate and learn and have mm -hmm. and be immersed in the conversation and the context, that's, that's what we think about when we think mm -hmm. about building spaces mm -hmm. uh, for, for education and gathering. Mm -hmm. I, I hope that answers the question. What a fantastic question, by yeah. the way. That's yeah, a, that's I think a really it does. Thank you. Yeah. It kind of shows because we're also partner with Zoom and we're also partner with Gather and sure. you know, there is a need for it. Um, that's why uh, we have brought Zoom into Classroom and Gather into Classroom. We and have a Zoom all all together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that is because um, there is different needs for it. Just like you said, if you're doing just a, a video uh, conferencing or if you just want to deliver that, then that's great. But if you just look at the breakout room, just look at the group sessions, how it's different. It works very differently. I think the other thing, let me, let me give you a really concrete example of mm -hmm. this. Um, so both, you know, Zoom, Zoom has breakout rooms and gather can have breakout rooms. Mm -hmm. In Zoom, I'm going to go to a breakout room. I'm put into a breakout room. Yeah. In Gather, I'm going to walk to a breakout room and I can <laughs> see my friend walking into breakout room too and I want to go sit with them. Yeah. So I'm going to walk into breakout room too. Or I see that only three people are in breakout room three. And I think that, oh, you know, maybe I should go there because so you have the ability to, to engage and interact mm -hmm. just in that one very, very simple instance. Yeah there's a layer of context that you just is impossible to have anywhere else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I totally agree. Yeah. I, I, I'm really, it's, it's very, how should I say, uh, people are more uh, proactive inside the system. I would say and gather, they will mm -hmm. actually go where they want. They will talk to who they want. They will be able to, you know, do or create a space that they want. So exactly. I think that really is a, a, the biggest difference. Yeah. hundred yeah, percent. 
Great. Oh, I think uh, the question um, was left by Joseph. So he's in the webinar. He said that he oh. is really, thank you for questioning and the answer. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure, Joseph. If you have any more questions, feel free to drop any questions that you want or contact Clossum or, Zoom, uh, Clossum or Gather. Yeah. Uh, let's go on to our fourth question. So the fourth question is, I'm curious how Metaverse can change learning experiences, especially can educators or teachers know and learn more about their learners' participation rate and analysis? Ooh, I think that's like the question that we had before about the data, but do you have anything that you want to, um, you know, kind of highlight on? Um, yeah, this is, it's a very similar question to Dana. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I think it, I think, I think the, the useful thing to think about with Gather is it's, it's a way of delivering the message, but it's mm -hmm. not the message itself. And just mm -hmm. as you get to determine what the message is, mm -hmm. um, you should also be the one that determines how that message is received. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'll say it again, use whatever works best for you. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the real benefit of the metaverse and the real benefit of Gather is is, is being able to, to ignore geography when it's convenient mm -hmm. or to use geography when in, in impossible ways, like, mm -hmm. like the ability to go on a field trip to wherever you'd like to go and to invite whoever you'd like into your mm -hmm. classroom. Mm -hmm. So specifically when we're talking about participation and analysis, I think I would, I would lean back on the things that you've done before. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yes, you can have full feature data analytics, but kind of the, the joy of gather is that it feels normal. So let's let's mm -hmm. treat it like it's normal. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think um, once I created a map for a class like science class, huh? it's like a park layout. Uh, but so people can go around. But if you go in and uh, look at the lake inside uh, at the pond, then you would uh, immediately go into the uh, the uh, what is it? The Lily uh, from the Monet's painting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, so people would automatically switch to art classes. And if they go to, like, look at the trees and they'll go in, they'll be able to see the leaves and they'll be able to walk into it, just look at the cells. And so I created a map for, like, a very, like, one park map that can actually deal with art and science and also, like, different. And I think the cool part is that when students walk to the clock, it will switch to a night park and they'll be able to look at the ecosystem of the night park and I think that was really cool and like you said the experience is different so like I think the data is a tricky part because how can you measure the experience on students like the wow factors right and how they kind of um, accept it like oh this is what the leaf looks like oh this is the molecules this is a cell like oh it's not that I just have to memorize it so I guess that is like really different to measure it's it, yeah no it is it's 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 how do you how do you measure the that experience mm -hmm. um, but also let me just say on a side note that's so cool <laughs> that's so cool oh, I, so fun this is this is why we're so excited to be working with y'all yeah so but it's, uh, the thing is as you explain it just takes little steps to do it it doesn't require yeah. you to look at the map for hours it's like 30 minutes and you're done and you know that's the cool part yeah and you're not and again i'll, I'll stress this you're not coding you yeah know, there's no there's no development required you can if you want to mm -hmm. um, but there's it's not necessary yeah. some of the some of the some of our favorite things that we've seen on gather are from people using our platform in creative ways mm -hmm. um that are that are not what we meant at all <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah true yeah i think this leaves us to the last question let's move on to our last but not least our fifth question okay what is the future of gathering costume what are your next steps this is like <laughs> you put this one in here didn't yeah. you <laughs> <laughs> I think people are really curious because Gather is moving and developing really fast. People are curious what you guys are doing next. So, you know, what's going on? Oh, uh, boy. Um, well, I don't know how much I can talk about in terms of Gather specifically. In terms of Gather in class, and boy, we are excited about everything that's going to be possible. Mm -hmm. we're, we're looking for any opportunity to be able to, to, to 
supplement what you're already able to offer, right? Mm-hmm. You, we, we know that Classroom is a fantastic platform and product. We know that you're working with some of the best uh, educational institutions in the world. We're just excited to get to tag along with y'all. I'll be Woo! honest. Um, <laughs> in terms of Gather specifically, a lot of what we've been doing um, is, is we've been working to build a stable robust foundation Mm -hmm. so that people can build whatever it is that's next on top of us and so Mm -hmm. what we're doing and what we're continuing to do is to um, to build tools that allow people to then build everything else Um, at the same time Mm -hmm. we're also I'm I'm hoping uh, (laughs) we're expanding we're we're moving into a lot of different markets Mm -hmm. Um, uh, side note, I'm hoping that I'll make an offer to one of our first Korean speaking employees Ooh. tomorrow, uh, which will be very excited about that um, <laughs> because, because we're, we're incredibly honored that, that we've seen such a, such a response uh, from Korean users. So I'm trying to think of if there's any specifics. One of the things that we can talk about now that we've got our new WebSocket API that's released, mm-hmm. the next step is looking at the core functionality of Gather and that core code and understanding how we can expand that mm-hmm. so that we can make the world more immersive and more interactive. Um, whether that's um, animations in the space, whether that's better sounds and effects, whether that's better data and analytics, whether mm-hmm. that's um, um, games that you can play or, or an inventory or a jumbotron watch experience where you can join and watch your favorite sports team with all the fans, no matter where you are in the world, you can come home on gather Mm -hmm. and have that interaction. So for us specifically, uh, we're excited about pretty much everything. Um, Mm -hmm. but mostly we're excited about the things that we don't know about yet because Mm -hmm. somebody else is building them and we're going to find out about them. (laughs) Uh, no, honestly. So Hillary Clinton tweeted about us and we found mm-hmm. out about it on the news. Yeah. We know. We, that we, was super exciting though. It was fun. It was exciting. Uh-huh. But I, I had a friend that sent me a picture from Times Square and I went, what? We're on the billboard? What? Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't know. We, we, the, the best part of Gather is the stuff that other people build on top of mm-hmm. us. That is so yeah. true. Like yeah. what we're doing with Classroom right now. Mm. So. so yeah, um, as I have said, um, Gather is just growing so fast. It's, I mean, I think we need to stress the fact that you guys are like a year and a little bit older. Um, it's like very fairly new company that is growing so fast. And I think that people are like super excited on how um, it would change um, like how they interact with other people, especially inside education. And I think that um, just having a little go-kart in a space, it just changes everything on how people like walk around and interact with each other. So I think people are even very interested about like little like updates, because for me, I was waiting for the Christmas decor to come out. And as soon as it popped, like our office like changed and, you know, it just what brings a different aesthetics to the um the office because we were like so into the Halloween fall season and now Christmas, you know? Yeah, that was well, really fun. Oh, well, thank you so much. I'll pass that along to Mark and the rest of the art team. They're, yeah. They work so, so hard. And, and I'll also say this, um, what do you want us to do next? Yeah. Uh, and I'll make, I'll say that to you, Eugene. And I'll say that to everybody here. Uh, we want to know what what's fun for you. How can we make... Mm-hmm. I, I ask this question all the time. I think I asked it the first time I met you, Eugene. Was mm-hmm. that, how can I make your life better today? Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, please let us know what you'd like to see. Mm-hmm. Um, specific teasers. We're releasing uh, more Christmas art every day until mm-hmm. Christmas. Ooh. Um, yeah. We just had an internal company hackathon. We took the Ooh. entire week off, spent the entire, the entire company got to work on fun projects. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's some really fun stuff that people built. And then we immediately took those things and are now investing in them to try to figure out, well, how can we take the fun stuff and bring Mm -hmm. it back in together? Mm -hmm. Um, One of my favorites and um, well, well, a really nice thing that someone made was they made, they made a pet cat. 
Oh. Uh, and, it, and it was it was modeled after their pet cat. And I thought that mm-hmm. was that was really, really sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that a team made was a uh, a garden mm. that you could go and plant and, and work in there, uh, but a communal garden. So the community had to work together. Things like that, things like integrations with other platforms and products. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the if, if, if you're looking for really, really specific stuff, boy, I... I'd get fussed at too much if I if I if I let too many secrets out. Yes, yes. It's, I think it's just, it's like it's like Vlogmas, I guess. Like people, you guys are popping new uh, Christmas things every day. Super excited. I'm um, just like so happy how decorative our office will be. Um, but to um, answer the question on the future of education, the future of cluster. Um, oh, we have such like so many exciting things coming out next year as well. But one of the things that I kind of highlighted on in my um, talk was that we are trying to uh, bring um, like all the tools that people need inside Clossum for like hub of education. That's what we are directing towards to. Um, so we are super excited to be able to um, announce different partnerships and launches about how um, people can use Clossum for more interaction and more <laughs> communication. And, um, you know, I'm super, I'm, I'm actually like really excited when I go on to like different talks and um, being able to tell people how can, like, so the question is, how can I make my class interactive? So it just like brings me into to this creative space where I can create different gather maps, but also to bring in um, how can I use Zoom more effectively? How can I use Padlet more effectively? How can I use this X, Y, Z? And bring that into a text or video or photo or anything based where people can bring that engagement and interaction. So yeah, we are directing towards that. So wait for new partnerships and new things that are coming into Classroom and especially our AITA dot will be- um, That's so yeah, cool. It's, it's really cool. It will be- keep um de- uh, developing and evolving on its own but uh, we'll see where it takes yes um so i think that was all the questions that we had um i think um the people that were um uh, the questions the five um questions that were announced um were answered so yeah nathan uh why don't you tell us like how you webinar or thought about the kind of closing now so I I had a great time. Thank you so much for letting me come and talk twice. <laughs> um, and and wait, how do you say uh, kamsahamnida? Yes, great, perfect. Yes. Yeah, you nailed it. <laughs> Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you, everyone, for coming to the webinar today. I'm super excited to talk more about Clossum and gather um, after the webinar. So please reach out to us to contact at Clossum.com or go to Clossum.com on the web, and you'll be able to talk to our experts um, through the chat as well. Um, yeah, I'm so excited to be able to present Nathan to Korean um, teams as well, Korean uh, users. Um, yeah. yeah, if you guys have any questions, please reach out to us. And thank you for attending our webinar. Thank you so much, everybody. Okay, thank you, everyone. Bye.